So you all have been or have seen the situation where you're in a car with a dead battery and you want to jump start. So you connect your jumper cable to a different car that has a better battery and your car goes on. So this is a perfect application for passive sun convention. So let me redraw this practical application in circuit diagram. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to represent the red car with this particular red box and the blue car with this particular blue box in here. And I'm going to connect them with the jumper cable. So there we have a jumper cable um, here, for example, and we have another jumper cable that is going in here. And typically what we do is we connect the jumper cables. The positive gets connected to the positive. Um, let me just do that. The positive sign goes connected to the positive sign in here and the negative sign, negative terminal gets connected to the negative terminal in here. All right. And that's what we have. And typically what we have is 12 volts. Uh, so we know that this is 12 volts. And of course, this should be 12 volts as well, because they're both batteries and they're connected in parallel. We'll see what parallel in series later. But for now, this is what we have. So this is car B in here. And this here is what we have as car A. And I've also given you um, some information about the current that is flowing. So the current that is flowing in here, I told you that this particular current is flowing this way and its value is negative 30 amps or 30 amperes. So taking a look at this diagram, um, we probably can figure out which one have the dead battery and which one doesn't, but I'm going to show it to you using passive sign convention and how easy it is to figure out. Of course, the one that is providing power, the one with a good battery should have a power that is negative, And the one that is absorbing power, the one with a dead battery should have a power that is positive because it's actually consuming power. So let's compute the power for A and compute the power for B. So the way we're going to compute the power for A, I'm going to say power of A and that equals typically it's I times V. And we do see the current I is actually going to which side of the terminal? Well, before the positive side, but before we figure out this, um, let's do this. So I'm going to multiply the current and the current is negative 30 amps. Okay. And I'm going to multiply by the voltage, which is 12 volts. Okay. So as you can see, what I did is I included the negative in here. So what does the negative tells me? The negative tells me that really the current is flowing that way, but I don't care for that. What I want is, okay, if I assumed it this way and I got the current that particular value with this particular sign, I'll just keep everything the same. And whenever I want to use this current, I just use the negative. And that's what you see in here. And I put it in parentheses just to emphasize this particular idea. So I have computed, technically I computed the power, but I didn't apply the passive sign convention yet. So the passive sign convention tells me this particular current is going to the positive sign or the positive terminal. So what we do is we put the positive sign in here and now we can compute that particular power. So PA happened to be negative and uh, 30 times 12, 300 and I believe it's 360 watts. Okay. And of course, we should compute the power for B. And, and just before we do that, well, we got a negative power. So which one have the good battery? Chances are it's A. This one has a good battery because it's the one with a negative power. That means it's generating power or supplying power. Probably prob B should be the one absorbing power and figure it out when we actually apply passive sign convention and compute the power it's using. Again, it's the same current and it's the same voltage. So we're going to multiply a negative 30 and we're going to multiply by 12. These are the same exact values. You can see it. It has 12 volts and 30 amps are fall flowing through it. Now, passive sign convention tells me the current is leaving the positive terminal. Of course, it goes all the way back in here. So it goes and hit the negative terminal. So passive sign convention tells me you have to put a negative sign in here. Again, I want to emphasize this. This negative is coming from this passive sign convention. The current is going from here to here, so it's hitting the negative terminal. But this neg the second negative in here, it's actually coming from the value of the current that is negative, and that's why I'm emphasizing it within the parentheses. All right, so now we compute this particular value, and we get the probability of B is actually 360. It's actually watts, and um, let me just correct this. I believe I made a mistake in here with the unit. That should be watts, not amps. All right. So now we know that the red car has or is providing 360 watts to the blue car. And there's also a concept, what we call it the conservation of energy. 
And conservation of energy in terms of circuit analysis tells me that the sum of all the powers throughout the circuit should add up to zero. And this is a perfect and simple example to show that. So if I actually sum just all the powers, which is probable power of A and power of B, the conservation of energy tells me that they should add up to zero. And of course, negative 360 watts plus 360 watts do add up to zero and conservation is power is actually set. Conservation is power is really important in terms of um, um, uh, circuit analysis. And the reason why is a lot of the times we solve the circuit, you figure out the voltages in the current, the easiest way to double check if your answer is correct is let's compute all the powers throughout all the elements in the circuit and add them. If they add up to zero, chances are my calculation and everything I've done is correct. All right, let's solve an exercise to show you this concept that I just explained, which is here, I have a circuit. I don't care what these elements are. I have multiple elements in here. I have A, B, C, well, that's an E, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I have provided you with a bunch of currents and a bunch of voltages. So of course, all the currents are specified directions and I have named them I of B and I of E. And I'm giving you the current values in here. So these uh, voltages should be, um, let me just see, I think this should be volts. Um, for some reason it's just appearing that way and the current is the unit for the current for all the currents that you see is milliamp um, I resized everything so the, um, the unit just disappeared on me for the table but anyway so the voltages all the voltages I'm giving you here across all the circuit um, uh, circuit elements are in volts and all the currents that I'm giving you and providing you are in milliamp all right, so that's perfect. So what I've been asked to do in here is let's figure out which of these elements are absorbing power and which are uh, consuming power or absorbing and consuming is the same which one is absorbing or consuming power and which one is providing or supplying power and the way we can do it is all you have to do is just multiply the current times the voltage for each one of these elements and you apply passive sign convention I recommend that you pause the videos and try to fill all these powers in here and do some of these powers. Conservation of energy tells you that if your all of your calculations are correct, they should add up to zero because the amount of power that is provided equals the amount of power that is being absorbed, so they should add up to zero. So pause the video, try to do that, and then come back and see me solving it. All right, so we go in here and let's solve for element A. So element A tells me you have to multiply, well, I of A, which is this one here, actually the negative four, uh, and the negative four uh, milliamps, and I have 40 volts in here. So all I have to do according to my power is, as you can, as you remember, is I times V. So I'm gonna, or V times I. So just so that to be consistent with the table in here, it's actually V times I. Well, it's the same because V times I. So what, I'm told is you have to multiply 40 times negative four. Again, you do keep that negative four. So that negative four that you have in here tells me that the current assumption that I have for I of A is wrong. The current is actually flowing downwards and that's how it should be. We have four milliamps going downwards in that direction. But because the way we calculated all of these or the way that maybe when we analyze the circuit, we assume that I of A is here because we don't know it ahead of time. And when we calculated it, we got negative four. So it just tells us that our assumption is wrong. But anyway, in terms of circuit analysis, whenever you put these currents and voltages on a circuit, just keep them, do not change them to make them positive. Just whenever you need to use a value like this I of A, just use it with its current um, sign. So in here, I have to multiply 40 times negative four, but of course, passive sign convention also tells me you have to take a look at where the current is hitting. Well, the current is going to that particular element through the negative port. So what you have to do is you have to put a negative in here. That's based on passive sign convention. Of course, negative times negative is positive. So the total power in here is 160. And you have to pay attention in term, um, uh, with, the, with the unit. So the unit, if we keep, if we keep multiplying the current um, as milliamp and the voltage as V, that means all of the calculations that we're doing, all of the units is actually in milliwatts, not watts. So pay attention to these units. All right, so moving on to the next element. So we're gonna locate B, B is here. It tells me, well, I of B and that's V of B. Okay, so we'll multiply them. So we have to multiply negative 24 times negative four in here. Again, similar to that situation with the current. Yes, the current assumption is wrong, but also as it happened to be that V of B, I assume that this have higher voltage than that port. Um, well, the assumption has been wrong because I got a negative number, so it's actually the opposite. So this should have been positive, this should have been negative. But again, I do not 
change it. I just, whenever I need to use that particular voltage, I just use it with its sign. So I'm going to use negative 24 and negative 4. And according here, we have to use passive sign convention. Passive sign convention tells me that I is hitting the positive. So what we do is we put positive in here and we calculate this particular value. It's 4 times 24 and we get, um, it's, I believe, 96 milliwatts. And you go on and you see, for example, the um, item C in here. And item C tells me you have to multiply the negative 16 in here. Okay, negative 16 times 4. Um, okay, so negative 16 times 4. But the I of C is actually going to the negative port. So that should be negative in here. So it's actually 4 times 16 in here. It's actually 64 milliwatts. We go to item D or element D and element D is in here. Well, I have the current is hitting the negative. So I have to have a negative and then I multiply a negative 80 um, times negative 1.5. And that is actually um, 80 times 1.5. Um, that's negative 120. So because I got negative in here, chances are that D is the one that is providing power. I'm just going to highlight it just so that we can remember that because of the negative value that we got. All right, we continue. Uh, where is E? Well, E is here. So we can take a look at it. The current is hitting the positive side. So because it's hitting the positive side, then the passive sign convention tells me this should be positive, And this is 40. And this is 2.5. OK. And the value for 40 times 2.5 is 100 milliwatts. And finally, the last element, which is F, I see that the current is actually hitting the positive side. So passive sign convention tells me that you have to use a positive in here. It's 120 times negative 2.5. So it's actually 120 times 2.5. Um, it's actually negative 300 milliwatts. So again, this one also uh, happened to have a power that is negative. So chances are it is, if, I, if my calculations are correct, chances are it's these two are the ones generating power. So how do I know that my answer is correct? What you do is you go on and you just sum up all of these. So you sum up the 160, 96, 64, negative 120, 100, and negative 300. And if you do that, you will see that the sum is equal to zero. And conservation of energy tells me the power supplied and the power um, used or um, power generated are equal. And these two elements that are highlighted in pink here are the ones that are generating power for this circuit. Regardless of what these elements are, we know ahead of time now like they, they are generating power.